Our hope is that you have been introduced to a framework and process for collaborating through conflicts in a way that promotes a positive outcome for everyone involved and most importantly for the patient. However, there may be situations during your training or in your career as a healthcare provider where you perceive yourself to be at a disadvantage primarily due to your junior position or status, for example, while you are a student or trainee reporting to a senior team member. Such situations are considered uneven tables, places where the assurance of fairness is uncertain. When we face these situations, we hope that we can even up the table as a solution, but sometimes we cannot. So what do you do in these situations? If you choose to address the conflict, you're encouraged to follow the three-step framework of cool down, slow down, and engage constructively. But if you feel that you cannot because you're at such a distinct disadvantage, we offer a range of possible responses to reflect upon. These reflections are personal yet practical and come from the voices of seasoned healthcare professionals with considerable conflict management knowledge and experience. These ways of being acknowledged on the uneven table yet still contribute to your professional and personal well being and rely on patient centered outcomes as a principle for negotiating at an uneven table. We offer five reflections along with practical strategies for each. When feeling defeated or overpowered, consider bringing to a negotiation what you know to be best about the human spirit and what is best for the patient. For example, what meets the university's mission and what provides knowledge to the larger society is to negotiate in healthcare environments for what heals our patients, what creates a healing environment for our patients and their families, and what heals communities suffering from a wide range of health deterrents. It also makes sense as a person to negotiate for the opportunity to grow and flourish and to serve others with integrity. This is an effective strategy to promote your own sense of well-being. Trainees may negotiate to advocate for patient services and access to, and the goal is for trainee to speak up in order to promote patient-centered outcome. Second, be a truth teller and support others to become truth tellers. The message, tell the truth, is often a loaded one because it suggests that your truth is a correct one while the other's views is not. Or it often suggests that there is only one truth. Instead, this message of tell the truth means to speak with honesty and openness about your perspective with the recognition that your view may be imperfect or incomplete. With your willingness to speak up, it often frees up others to reveal their particular window on the truth, and as others do this, we're collectively able to get some closer expression of the truth. Each new window widens everyone's view and everyone has the opportunity to benefit. The final version is always larger, more complete, and more fulfilling as long as each person is ready to hear the whole truth. How do you do this? Apply the negotiation skills introduced earlier with particular emphasis on speaking and listening. Number three, honor your integrity. This way of being always sounds acceptable, but at an uneven table, it may be honored at some cost to you. As a healthcare professional, you will face difficult situations and issues in the future, one that you believe compromise the health or safety of your patient. You may have issues of personal integrity that are really important to you and that you would never feel good about compromising in any negotiation. Consider the exercise form post. These questions may not have easy answers, but they do raise useful issues. Think about a conflict that you were involved in, one that involves strong feelings and had either a mixed outcome or an outcome that is still haunting you. This written reflection will help you thoughtfully to and consciously prepare a future situation based on what you learned in the past. Were the issues of personal integrity involved for you? If yes, what were they? What happened when they were stated? If they weren't, do you think it could have made a difference? How would you have stated your issues of personal integrity? How will you address the dilemma? Can you follow the cool down, slow down, engage constructively mantra to address this difficult situation? Number four, find a place for compassion at the table. Negotiation is ultimately a very human process. It is a transaction among a set of diverse individuals, each of whom has their own set of needs, hopes, fears, and faults. This is not so much bad news as it is true news, 
and the ability to face this true news is the first step in finding compassion at the table. How do you find a place for compassion at the table? One concrete strategy is to forgive the other person for whatever human misstep has occurred, and forgive yourself for your own limitations. Compassion and apologies help us to cool down and slow down, which in turn helps us to reflect, to listen better, and to try to better understand. Number five, expand the context to promote innovation and creativity. In discussing conflict management, it helps to differentiate between those who come to the table with the intention to prevail and those who come to the table to create a solution to the conflict. In a given situation, if you don't know what the other person's intention is, you can ask, because I value our relationship, I'd like to meet with you with the hope that we can brainstorm and find some solutions to our conflict that are acceptable to both of us. I'd like to ask if we can further discuss this matter. If the answer is, no, my position is final, then you have another set of choices, neither of which is ideal. You can either attempt to pursue your agenda, or you can choose to leave the table, acknowledging what you understand to be the other person's position. However, if the answer is yes, you can continue the negotiation because this response is an open one, a response that means the outcome is only limited by your collective imagination and goodwill. You can continue in the dialogue because you took the risk of asking whether the other party's position was final. As always, applying collaborative verbal and nonverbal communication skills contribute to a productive conversation.